Greetings and good evening, everyone. We gathered together some of the analysts today for a little discussion on the cease and desist on Jan animations, and everybody would like to give in their own two cents on the subject. Today we have Peter, also known as the Aneromancer. Good evening, everyone. And we have Redcord. Hello, everypony. Also, Unova Brony. Signing in, Unova speaking. As well as Sweetie Bloom. Hello. And finally, Puzzle Brony. Greetings, everypony. I'm glad to be getting a little group together like this because I've got a lot that I'd like to say on this subject, but I'm going to direct the conversation towards Peter first off because I know that he has quite a few things he'd like to say. All right, thank you. Um, now, I did hear about the Jan animations thing from, uh, from everyone else first, and I did eventually check out his Tumblr, which is what I was going to get at. And as a minor note, I was under the impression initially that Jan Animations, the reason he could get away with this was because I was under the impression he had worked for Hasbro before, or at least Studio B. Whether that's true or not, I thought that Hasbro just gave him some leeway, so to speak. But I looked at his Tumblr, and he got a message from someone that said, like, fight for your rights, this is terrible. And Jan Animations essentially said, look, it's it's really easy to say fight for your rights when you have nothing left to lose. Because he does admit that he, if he took this to court, he would not win. He is using other characters that don't belong to him and are copyrighted. He is, um, well, essentially he's doing a lot of things that would break copyright. So he's not going to pull any risks against a multi-million dollar corporation, lose, and then, as he put it, get blacklisted from his animation career before it even begins. So, in a sense, he, he couldn't continue this if he wanted to. But at the same time, I can see where he's coming from. He has to think about his future, is essentially what I'm getting at. Well, personally, I don't know all that much about the law behind copyright. It's quite the mess to get into in the first place. It's been a lot of fun seeing all the creations from Jan Animations. They've been around for, oh goodness, well over a year, maybe even as many as two. And it's very unfortunate that we get to see this sort of thing popping up, but I'm actually more interested in trying to think of what does this mean for fan creations in the future? I mean, this is not the first cease and desist that's come down on someone famous within the Brony fandom. But in the case of Jan Animations, I know that they've inspired a lot of other people to try their hand at creating something interesting and new and improving upon their talents. It's enjoyable content for sure, and it's a lot of things that we like to watch over and over, but I'm more interested in what happens if fan creations reach a point where the really professional people don't feel like they want to try their hand anymore, and it stops inspiring all these new people joining the fandom to try and improve upon their talents. I mean, that's a huge thing from even in the early days of the Brony fandom, that you see all this wonderful creative talent in art and stories and animation and voice acting and so much else, and that inspires so many other people to start adding their own thing. And it just continues in perpetuity. But in a case like a cease and desist, that it becomes more frequent and more people feel hesitant to even start trying, what does that mean for the fandom in general? Well, it's interesting that you bring this up because there are certain fan creations, like, say, fan fiction, where it's a little too widespread to actually do anything about it, and or there may be some protections regarding fan fiction. I'm not entirely sure how that works, but either way, they don't pursue it, probably because even if you could try and do a cease and desist, there's probably no way to enforce that kind of cease and desist, because there's very little proof that you did it, or I'm not sure. But when it comes to, say, music or animation or video games, 
Those are big, invested projects that tend to get a lot of attention, and you can trace it back to a team or one guy. Um, so, in that sense, that kind of creativity... Um, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, I, I think I would just like to put my two bits in this in saying that I, I never really expect this to happen to someone like Jan and stuff, but then again, I'm not that informed in the whole copyright law and stuff, and it, this goes into the whole YouTube thing, well, I, I only know so much, but this goes further, this goes all the way to the company of Haswell itself, and uh, at first I really thought that that Jan Animation, out of everyone, he would be in the white, as in under fair use completely, because I think, like you said earlier, he works for Studio B or something like that, and I assume that was, like, permission by Hasbro to do what he's doing and stuff. So, uh, not so much as, like, the double rain boom thing, well, that was actually under fair use because of educational purposes, but now this one, I'm just curious as to far, uh, no, as to how far this will go if Hasbro is really concerned about fan creation going this far and using their own characters and stuff. I mean, with Button and stuff, they uh, that Hasbro didn't or the show didn't really use him that much in there. It was just for a bleak second, and and all of a sudden they just don't want him using that. But it's like Button's mom, yeah, that's fine and all because she's a, diff- a new character but they just can't have the design or style of her so uh, uh, how far will it go to where all of our other fan creations such as the more detailed ones uh, I'm I'm guessing dual cartoonists with Children of the Night by Luna that that one I'm just not sure whether or not that will be caught too or whether the other ones as well it, I'm, I'm just confused on this and if there's anyone here that knows more about the whole copyright law and stuff, feel free to elaborate on it. All right. No, somebody will wait till everyone else goes first. Mm. All right. So, um, my thoughts on the matter of uh, Jan Animation cease and desist is, uh, I always thought that, um, in comparison to the other cases, that Jan had more respect to the franchise than, uh, many others. I mean, he used the characters in such a positive light, even interjected some wonderful comedy that turned out to become one of the background um, things in the show. See, um, Ponified version of, um, what was that guy's name again? Uh, well, anyway, um, like, uh, he's, he's been very kind. He's, he, he worked a lot with, like, uh, the VAs who, um, are only contracted by Hasbro, but, uh, he did all of this by himself and created something that is that is not subpar quality, but actual exact quality. And to see such a guy like this go to to a cease and desist, I'm starting to wonder like, should everything be low key or or should we be worried about the future of creativity by expressing ourselves with um with with our existing mediums like this just. The future is uncertain. There isn't any ground lose being way, so we don't know what's going to happen next. The music industry certainly does have like laws that um that already exist. Like if we catch you, like they only do this like one every a million, we charge you like an extremely amount of money for um pirating this music. But for like things like animation and other types of um of medium besides music, there isn't any groundwork. So. The future is uncertain as of we as of now. So, yeah, that's my two bits on the matter. Um, well, for me, um, I don't have a lot of um, background or experience in the law, but how I understand it, how it's supposed to work, is that it's supposed to, it's meant to protect the identity of the company. And um, I think in the case of Jan Animation, uh, what the issue is is that it was. It was strangely too good. So I think that, in, in a sense, fan fiction is safe um, because fan fiction is very obviously fan-made. What was um, what I think made um, Jan Animation go too far was that it was so high quality that it could be mistaken for official content. And that's what Hasbro's scared of, is fan-made content being mistaken for official content. 
And so actually, oddly, getting too good at your craft is where it goes awry. Uh, but it is sad in the case of Jan Animation that, um, as Anova said, of all the fan work to get caught, it's the one that had so much decent, that was truest to My Little Pony and what, what it, it represents, and that it wasn't really smudging its name or its image, but it could have been um, mistaken for, for real content. And I think um, you brought up before the uh, Children of the Night, or, or someone did, uh, the Children of the Night, and that, that probably is in danger. It is in danger of being taken down because it's Luna, and it can be um, mistaken for um, real content. So I guess the moral of the story is be a pirate. You know, don't support it too much because uh, Hasbro found out about Jan Animation because it was so popular. So if the Children of the Night gets really popular, they'll find out about it and they'll probably shut that down too. And I think that, you know, going into art and music and stuff is, is a very integral part of this fandom, and I think it will continue. Um, but I think it does get to a point where you have to take a little more creative content. What I was very relieved to find out on the Tumblr is that they're not stopping Button's adventures exactly. They're reformatting it so that creating their own characters so that it doesn't look like MLP, but keeping the character and keeping the story going. And I think that, that, um, that thank goodness, that they're, all their creative, the work that they put into it hasn't gone completely to waste. Oh, yeah. Well, one one thing I just don't like about all this, I mean, something about the show, it, it inspires creativity and stuff from the fans and all, and as as creative as we want to be, we want to still have some of the essence of the show within there and all. Uh, we Some of us don't really want to discourage the characters or something, and others just mainly do it for the comedic purposes, but usually when you have comedic purposes and show accurate settings and everything all in one, then but then that's when Hasbro really hammers down on the content creators and stuff. Or if it's not that show accurate at all, like video games where we all know the fighting is magic fiasco, that Hasbro just didn't want their characters being recognized as that, as sort of a fighting game or sort of fighting characters when the show is not about fighting. I can kind of understand their position from there and everything, and I do think a, a redesign or anything for it is the best choice, because we, we don't want Jan to get in trouble for his content and stuff, but it's like, just do what you can. If if they say you can't, then just come to a compromise and everything like that, but all in all, you're going to have to uh, ha- have to listen to the big man and everything in the end, but in the end, it's the best. Oh yeah, I I heard right now I'm I even know one of the posts and stuff from the MLP staff or so, and, and they were gonna look into this and stuff. And I, I'm pretty sure Jan is kind of safe. It's like, hey, they he has the support from the people who who are behind My Little Pony, but it's just the company itself that that he has to get behind in order to continue doing this stuff. Uh, and that's that's something else. Uh, the staff and everything, they were all right with it. And uh, Hasbro is even all right with with people like us, like the reviewers and stuff, or analysts of the community reviewing this stuff. See, but that that's a whole nother story. It's just on the fair use. We're doing stuff like that. But he, he's actually creating content and stuff that is show accurate. We're just reviewing it, saying how sh- accurate it is. Um, one thing that I was wondering about was, uh, was you know... Uh, if uh, it really was Jan Animations that was doing, that was uh, causing the problems, um, because, uh, you know, you just look up uh, Button's Adventures on YouTube, and you will come across so many different, uh, different uh, spin-offs of, of that one video. I mean, and most of them are, uh, are, uh, not safe for work um, because Button's mom has taken off in a way that I don't think the creator is expected. Um, so um, that, it might be an image thing. Um, it might not. Uh, and uh, But uh, 
I really, I really think it's, uh, it might have something to do with intention. It might not, but, um, yeah, that's all I have to say. Right. Um, in reply to some of these, I do know that fair use can, can be kind of tricky because there's commentary and reviews, so technically what we're doing as analysts, for instance, is covered under fair use. Um, or, like, if you're doing, like, a Let's Play, like, if any of you guys have seen any Let's Plays of people playing video games, that's also covered, covered under fair use. The thing is, if you're borrowing copyrighted content and, in a sense, claiming it as your own, it, become, it becomes to get iffy. And I'm not saying Jane Animations was making money off of it, but if he was making money, then they'd have a real problem. Part of it is identity, and another part of it is... Um, um, uh, holding on to the copyright. But in regards to what Puzzle had just said about spinoffs, well, here's the interesting thing about those copyright things. There is another channel that has uploaded everything Jan has made, in, in, at least MLP stuff. However, um, they can't order a cease and desist on that channel because he's not the creator. It's, it's kind of interesting. They can order the, cha the channel to take those off, but um, obviously he didn't make them. The thing about those is that they can't really punish Jan for spin-offs. So it doesn't matter what, whether or not not safe for work content has, a, has happened because of what he's made. They can't punish him for it because it's not his fault. It's, it's kind of like if a, a mentally diseased person did a school shooting and they blamed Harry Potter. The, re, the true result should not be let's ban Harry Potter it's it's just the guy. I'm not and no, I'm not comparing the people who made the not civil content to a school shooter, but it's the point of blame. It's like you can't blame the original creator for something that resulted from their creation and that they had no control over. So I don't think it was really that. I would say that I'm getting rather curious about whether Hasbro has really needed to change how they handle these legal issues over the years, specifically because of us. Now, I know that they've slapped copyright issues on a lot of people over the years, and I'm sure that the majority of them are for very good reason. When it starts getting into the brony fandom, and whether or not a brony is specifically making money off of their creations, I don't know, but putting that aspect aside, I have to wonder if Hasbro has decided to change anything of how they're doing things, because a lot of what the Brony fandom is doing is essentially free advertising in a really, really big way. And I know that they are not ignorant of that fact. Actually, originally when they allowed MLP to be on YouTube, I believe we, and I'm certain that we all remember the time when MLP episodes were all over YouTube, the Hasbro CEOs initially had no problem with it because exactly what Dr. Wolf said, they did view it as free advertising. I believe I got a, I saw a direct quote from the CEO of Hasbro saying, why stop this because it's free advertising. This was before they implemented the uh, system where um, you can watch MLP episodes on YouTube right now. You do have to pay $2 for it, though. I was actually more specifically talking about the fan creations. I know that they've been putting episodes on YouTube for ever since the show started, but I'm just trying to focus on the fan creations for the moment. And really, uh. that is free advertising, for the show itself. I mean, I never would have gotten remotely interested in the show to begin with were it not for the fan creations. This is a really big reason for a lot of bronies about what makes them curious in the first place is when they see all these dedicated and creative people putting all these really impressive works out on the net. So it's really interesting to think well, has Hasbro changed how they're looking at these things over the years? Now, in the case of Jan Animations, 
I can understand some of the reason why they're doing it, even though I don't understand the law per se. I can understand some of the reasoning behind it. I feel that it is both helping them and hurting them by doing something like a cease and desist, and I could see reasons why it's helping and hurting them if they didn't do anything at all. And at this point, if they ever removed a cease and desist order, for whatever the reason, that would open up the floodgates to any other content creator out there who would think that they could accomplish the same thing. That if they got a letter from Hasbro, that they really wouldn't have to take it too seriously because they would start thinking to themselves, well, this person managed to convince Hasbro to leave them alone, and I'm going to try to do the same. I can honestly see a lot of positive and negative if they did nothing, if they stuck with this C&D, or if they removed it later on. It doesn't matter which direction they go at this point. There's going to be consequences. Yeah. So, so I'm just guessing, in the end... It all comes down to just whether or not Hasbro wants to deal with a situation like this, whether if something is too... Well, only this, this thing only got this way because it was so popular. If other fans started creating certain themes or something or videos of it, then, then it, if it doesn't get that popular to where they notice it at first, because Hasbro can't really check everything that goes online, and it's uh, they don't really want to check everything. But if it's something like where they ought, like know this that has millions of views and stuff, and people are getting some info or something from this itself, then it's like, oh man, this thing is becoming a big thing. We have to look at this, and it's like, wait, this might hurt us and all, so we have to put a stop to this, or just inform the individual. But I'm just more curious on to the part where, when does it stop? But if it does stop, is that, I mean, when is it more damaging to Hasbro if they stop this, or if they don't act on it? Uh, Yeah, I think um, the interesting thing is that it, it's very much... Uh, what Dr. Wolf said is that if they do go back on it or reevaluate it, um, as we've heard that they, they're they looking into it, if they do reevaluate, they will have to make sure that there's specifics about why. And um, I think it, I think really the thing that um, is in Jan Animation's favor is that it wasn't damaging to the image of My Little Pony. It was within the spirit of My Little Pony. Um, maybe like one video that I can think of may not have been PG, but definitely com- compared to other fan works, it was definitely something you could still show your kid. Um, but, uh, you know, I, c- I can still understand where they're coming from, that it wasn't made by the company. Um, but I think they do have to be very specific about um, what they, they consider to be okay and what they don't, if they are going to retract this. So they do have to be very specific that it doesn't, um, increase what everyone's going to um, to do, and and oh, it's going to be okay. Well, no, you can't just um, take something from someone else. Obviously, it's it's plagiarism, but you can still create your own work. And if it's you know if it's in complement to the original work, maybe you can be okay. But I'm not sure it it will entirely be up to Hasbro about what is and is not kosher. That is exactly one thing that I've always worried about the copyright is they're not specific. Uh, they they never change the law or the law has not been revised or anything. And they this is something that has to resolve fast and all because it, it, it just says like you cannot use the content and stuff for this except for these purposes. But how far do these purposes go. It's like, what is the range that we can and cannot use it? It's not specific into saying like, oh, you can use this, but you can, you can only use this much amount of it. Well, you do not give us a, a, a clear range of what we can and cannot do. So if it's anything, you guys should be more specific in this, or else we would be using material and stuff in the way that 
might damage you, but you guys didn't give us a clear explanation to how far we can go, so it's more on your guys' part, in just my opinion. Actually, the law says, actually does define what you can and can't use it for. It's just that Hasbro can't drop the hammer on everything because they don't have time to search for everything. All right. Um, I'd like to answer a question Puzzle decided to brought up. Um, the question was that since Buttons is based off of character in the show, would Hasbro be able to use Buttons? Well, uh, in the terms of a Puzzle's question, Buttons is not exactly a character more so, he's a background. He's like, he's like one of those people that you would hire for a few amount of bucks to like stand around in the background, only this trying like artificial creation. Um, Jan Animations have uh, has created this 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 like characterization of this background character based on the limited amount of um, experience we have had with that character from the from the episode uh, Hearts and Hooves Day, and well. Hasbro can um Hasbro can definitely own the model of the character, but I'm but I'm kind of it's I'm kind of sure that they don't own like the characterization of the of the character that um that spires off from Jan Animation's works. See um I believe um Jan may argue against Hasbro using the exact specifications that they're using buttons for. Because it was his idea to go with that type of characterization, not Hasbro's. And and if they do that, then they'll be in clear violation of like um, copying off of someone else, plagiarism essentially. So um, they would have to develop a whole new character centered around this button model. Even the name Button Mash, that is all of Jan's work, not Hasbro. They make they have to go with a different name. I was going to bring up that I was actually I'm actually going to disagree with you Nova here is because the point is just because you're not using something doesn't mean that someone can just come in and take it and claim it as theirs. Hasbro still owns the rights to it, and the problem is when you use a canon character like this, you acknowledge that risk that they can just pull the plug or use the idea because just because you implement that idea or use any button mash or you characterize button mash, you're free to do that, but you don't own it. He doesn't own the rights to the character or the show. So even then, it wouldn't be plagiarism for Hasbro to um, use Button Mash or Button's characterization, because even though Jan made it, and you can argue whether or not Jan is in the right or not, Hasbro owns the copyright. So if, even if he brought it to a court and judge, Hasbro would still win that case, whether you agree with it or not. All right. Um... So uh, I have I I have like um throughout the conversation I I had this to think about. There's like three parties in mind that we have to think about when discussing about this uh, uh cis and the cis. The fans, the corporation, and the law. I have a feeling that every single party must evolve in order for um this type of conflict to not happen again in order for this type of conflict to not be as inflated as it is with like righteous fury and sorts, and it shouldn't uh, leave many people with resentment over one party or the other. The fans must mature instead of using, um, instead of using like, uh, the anonymity powers of the internet in order to, um, display their, um, their childish or righteous, uh, anger in the form of bashing, blaming, etc. The corporation, in this case Hasbro, they have to be more open to um to the venue of people wanting to discuss about this uh this sort of affair that they're doing to um such a popular French uh such a popular um channel. They should analyze as as I would put, A.K.A. think everything before they act, since uh this is sensitive territory they're going over. Since uh the fandom can indeed uh, have enough power to do um many things, but we don't want the fandom to do something that it'll regret later on. Uh, for example, uh, the Derby incident. And the last party in this is the laws must change according to the times. We are, we are at a point of hyper-evolution in terms of technology, 
to the point that we could change our phones in a matter of two to five years instead of twice that lifespan in the earlier time periods. So, so thinking about that, um, there are a lot of people that will soon be able to have the ability to create these sorts of animations, and that they want to be, they want to feel inspired by their favorite shows in order to celebrate them, but they don't want to be hurt by um, their actions just because they want to support the show that they love. So the law must must change, and we need people for it. That is my two bits on that. One last thing I would just like to add about this whole situation is that whatever comes out of this whole incident and all, it will just be an example for future incidents. If anything like this comes up, this will be something for Hasbro to think back on to this event and then now make the best decision. So if this goes the way of Jan Animation, if it goes the way of Hasbro, either way, it's a good example and stuff to how far our content can go and stuff towards that of the show. So I don't think this would be a complete loss on anybody's part. It's sort of a win-win in in a small amount, I guess. But uh, that that's all I have to say about it. Um, okay. um, first thing I forgot it was Slenderman um, during my first portion of the discussion, uh, the Slender Pony thing. And last but not least, what I can take from this from this incident is that um. Um, uh, due to what I said about like the law must be changed according to the times it must adapt um, I I feel like there should be more people trying to r- r- rally for um, for like the media law since uh, since honestly it's like very unclear as into the moment that that how many people would be um really support um or try to go against uh, corporations for um for like uh, their actions and whether or not they're trying to do quality control or trying to incite a riot due to them carelessly um eliminating like the top channels of like huge projects into the works, you know? Like I may I may become uh, more interested in media law as a result of this uh, conflict because Jan Animation hits deeps for many of us. You know? His Well Go ahead, continue. I have something to say after. Yeah. It's it's like the type of work that only one man from all the way up in Italy just decided to like, you know what? I'm going to make show quality work uh, from this show that I love so much. And he poured his heart and soul and invited a couple of people that have like amazing voice talent and created something that could be enjoyed by many a spectrum. There are many channels that have multiple animators, but Jan Animations was special since... He was only one, and did so much more. I, I can see that, but then again, we still have to remember, it's not his thing, and again, with the creative things, there are other laws keeping in place. They need some way to hang on to the copyright. If you're too lenient, I can kind of see, yeah, you lose the copyright. And I just don't think it's Hasbro's job to be enforcing creativity, because they, they still do have to watch their own backs. It. So it's cool that Jane could do this, but he wouldn't be in this mess, for instance, if he just did his own thing. And when I say did his own thing, I mean, yeah, it's cool that he did this, it's cool that he was able to do this, but there are certain fan projects that it's like, when they reach a certain level, then they kind of have to be noticed, and you kind of have to do something, otherwise you risk a lot of things. It's not as simple as the company is keeping you down, because the company isn't keeping you down just because. And I feel that the opposition would be saying they must allow any content to be flourishing and running about um, to, um, as a countermeasure, which I don't agree with either. Because you, you still have to respect that, like it or not, there are things you, c- you can do. Like, um, the copyright laws do define what this is and talk about it, but there are limits to this. And I can see, the, I can see what the limits are on both sides. I'm not saying they're exactly even, but they have to be there. Personally, I am hoping that Jan Animations will be able to create something new and exciting that they can really enjoy and that the fans can really enjoy. I'm not entirely sure what the best move for Hasbro is at this point, but I know that our fandom is still going strong and we're still pulling things together. So I'm glad everyone was able to join me this evening. 
Uh, thank you kindly, Peter. You're welcome. And to Redcord. Thank you very much for including me in here. And for Anova. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Wolf. And Sweetie Bloom. Anytime. And you, Puzzle Brony. Thanks for having me. We would like to hear your thoughts on this conversation in the comments and what you think the best move for Hasbro and Jan, Jan Animations would be at this point. Thank you, and I hope everyone has a good evening.